Hello and welcome people to Server Client 101. Today it's the second chapter, yes I decided to make it chapter wise, of our how to set up a home server series. So today we're going to set up the network and also we're going to set up the work group. That's very important in a Microsoft based network and I will show you what that means later on. But first of all, let's set an IP address. I've already explained what IP addresses, subnets, gateways and DNSs are and if you don't know it still or if you didn't watch the video I encourage you to do so. The link to the video will be in the description but also it will be right here where my selection is. Great. Okay just go there, view it and then come back. Okay? Great. So now that we are left with the viewers who actually viewed the video, um, we double click on the network symbol we have in the taskbar. You know the network connection we did that show from Windows, oh my god that was bad English but whatever, in the last episode. Okay, first we're going to go to support and then we click on details. Now we can see the currently used IP address and also the subnet mask. Oh, sorry, I did put that out of the picture, but whatever. Also, the subnet mask, we can view the default gateway and the DHCP server and also the DNS server. The DHCP server basically is something that we're going to disable now. DHCP basically means um, that this server will give you an IP address no matter what. So it's my router that is also connected to the internet that makes sure that every computer gets a different IP address so that every computer can interact in the network. That's pretty handy, but not for our case. Because sometimes it may happen that, I don't know why, but you switch the computer off and you boot it back up and it will get another IP address than the last time. Most of the time, the router will give it always the same IP than it did before. But if somehow this changes, basically you are, I don't want to say this word, but you are effed. Okay? Um, because then pretty much your network is almost useless. Good. Now what we want to do is we want to set our IP manually. To do that we keep we have to keep that in mind. We could either print screen or do my favorite trick. We go on to start, run, type in CMD, click on OK, and then type in IP config. Not done fig, not fun fig, config. And press enter. Now we'll all, you will also see the IP address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. That information is needed. So now we put them side by side. We click back to the general tab, and now we click on properties. We will click on the internet protocol TCP IP. But first, we have to put this window off to the side, so we can still read this one. And now, basically, I'll put it near. Great. Now we basically have to set our thing up. Use the following address. Now we can just use the IP address that is already assigned to us. But in fact, I will use the 50 channel. But I will make this computer 50 and my client 51. If I click in a subnet mask, the basic or better the standard subnet mask that networks uses 255, 255, 255 and 0. And basically, if you just click on here, it will autocomplete. That was not cut. It was autocompleted. Now we need to get to our um, default gateway. We leave to uh, have them the same. And if you have just one digit numbers, you have to press the right cursor key on your keyboard to get to the next field. So it's like you can type three numbers. It will automatically jump. Three numbers, it will jump for you. You press one. Now you either press the right cursor key or the space key and press the other digit that you want. Good. I hope everything is clear. You have just to look up what your network is. Like 192.168.1 is my network. 
it may differ from you, like, uh, like not Xboxes. If you have a router called a Fritzbox from AVM, basically those usually have 192.168.178 dot. Okay, so you just have to look that up like I did here. Now I just click on OK and OK again. Now I just can close this one. Next is we can check the internet browser if it worked what we did right there. So we just Google and it seems to have worked. We have internet access. Great. So now we have to specify a work group. A work group basically is also, how should I call it, kind of a subnet in the MS worlds. It basically is a, a specified range of computers. For example, if you have in a company, like it's all made for companies, so I have to explain it that way, okay? Good. So imagine a company with three different apartment uh, with three different parts or apartments or whatever let's say with three different buildings one is building one one is building two and one is building three then each building has its own work group but it's also connected to the other buildings so if you would go to start anywhere and then look up the my network places you would see all the diff and you see view workgroup computers you will then see of course this won't work you will then see building one building two and building three and you so you can differentiate uh, which computers and whatnot basically now my uh, Explorer got stuck but whatever I just restart the Explorer good and now we have to set our own to do that we right click onto my computer click on properties and then click on computer name and we also click on change now not only can we set a work group we can also set a computer name for our server I call this weird one two three because yeah I just wanted to like simulate a computer you buy on eBay. They have sometimes really weird computer names, lots of numbers and stuff like that. But actually, since this is the server, you should give it an appropriate name, which is server. <clears throat> but this is actually not what I'll do. I will say server dash tut for tutorial because my own home server is already called server. So I'll call it server tut. And in the workgroup section, we can just leave workgroup or get into another workgroup. But for this example, I will leave the workgroup like it is. And we click on OK. And OK. And then OK again. And then it asks us to restart. Just click Yes. While our server reboots, we will set our client up. So first we will just also go into the system preferences by going to control panel. Then most of the time it's in category view, but you also can switch to the classic view. We go to the network connections tab thingy. Yeah, right here. Click on the local area connection properties and internet protocol. And Whoops, what is all that data in there? I didn't put it there, but okay, nice. Okay, so basically, now we need to get in the IP address of the server, whoops, increasing by one. You could also do it differently, but I will do it that way. I can remember better. Default gateway and DNS server are always the same for every computer, but the IP address must differ. So we click double times on OK, and this should basically work. Sometimes, because of my VMware internet, won't work for me. OK, so now even this computer is in our IP range. Now our server rebooted successfully. 
And now in the client, we also have to set the workgroup and a name. So you go back to the computer name tab, change, computer name is in this case client, and the workgroup is workgroup, so it's the same, it's good, very good, very, very, very good. And uh, yeah, basically it's all the setup you have to do on the client and on the server side, basically also the network configuration is done. So what else do we need to do now? So basically we have to set up some account stuff. So some stuff on the server to get ready for remote controlling it because I bet you don't want to always get out keyboard and mouse and stuff like that just to control your server. You don't have to do that. Basically you can go ahead and use remote control, remote desktop control from your client. So if you're going on accessories, uh, communications, then you'd see, uh, wow, it isn't even there. Okay, remote desktop connection, there it is. And basically, later on, we will connect it so that you can log in from here to here. So see you till then. Bye.